Everybody is looking at how to leverage AI in their business, and that is why there is a new standard, ISO 42001, uh, that is being created. And my notes say it's being created to focus on risk management, ethical considerations, and continuous improvement. About a year ago, we had a chat with Jason from ISO 365 around uh, ISO 27001. That's got over 10,000 views. I've had meetings with a lot of people who got heaps of value from that. So if you're into the ISO world, maybe go start with that one. In that video, Jason also talked about what ISO certs are. Started from a higher level. Like, we're not going to do that today. We're going to jump straight into this specific certification. But uh, yeah, if you need more detail on what the ISO standards are, then go back and look at that. Uh, Jason, after all that big rant, hello. Thank you for coming up. Thank you for having me again. Um, you're up for Evolve, aren't you? So we're, yes. you're based in Sydney? Uh, Melbourne. Melbourne, yep. miles off. Oh, uh, there you go. We'll edit that out. Um, <laughs> all right, we won't. It's fine. Uh, okay, so look, let's, let's talk about... Um, the story behind this AI standard for 2001. Yeah. What was the genesis? Uh, was I right about what it's trying to achieve? Yeah. And, uh, and, and why is it now picking up momentum? Yeah, awesome. Um, so yeah, absolutely. It was something that uh, was released in December of 2023. Um, so it's taken about a year to kind of get some traction. Um, that's always the case with with ISO standards as well. You you know that you need to get auditors trained up. You need to get implementers, things like that. Um, and so yeah, its intent is to help um, any organization really govern the use of AI uh, mm -hmm. within their organization, mainly around risks uh, and impacts using that AI. Um, and so impacts is something that's new uh, that may not necessarily um, be a part of everyone that um, is doing 27,001's uh, vocabulary because impacts are about actually um, impacts to individuals, groups of individuals or societies. So as we know, AI can actually have, uh, can cause uh, some damage as well as be really good. Um, and so, yeah, it's around impacts to um, to those three areas. Okay, so ISO twenty seven thousand and one seems to be the most widely understood and adopted certification, at least in our world. Uh, in our world, yes. Uh, in the world, probably uh, OH and S and, and quality is sure. probably uh, the, the two dominant ones. But yeah, in our in our world, in the tech space or in the SaaS space, um, twenty seven thousand and one is the one um, that MSPs have been looking at um, and adopting uh, mm -hmm. over the last twelve months, especially. Um, and that continues to, to drive forward. And so, uh, I was going to say that uh, I alluded to it before we started filming, but I had a meeting with a potential client who now is a client recently, and they said, oh, I actually came across your brand uh, because of your conversation with Jason from ISO 365 around ISO 27001. So nice. content marketing all uh, works, clearly, <laughs> uh, which is great. Um, okay, but my question there was going to be, is there any correlation or need to like between 27,001, 42,001, uh, one without the other, one lead into the other, any correlation? It's, it's actually a great question. I am definitely on the side of bolting on um, AI, the AI standard 42,001 onto an existing 27,001. There's, um, there's a lot of data governance that gets taken care of as part of 27,001. So um, it is it's infinitely easier to bolt on an AI management system onto an existing InfoSec management system. It's not to say that you can't just do one or the other independently, mm -hmm. um, but absolutely, there's no doubt that um, MSPs that are looking to um, consult or you know use, and let's face it, everybody is using it, um, AI, it is a really good way for them to bolt it onto their existing standard. Okay, so given every single business is using AI to some degree, even if it's shadow use, like mm -hmm. it's, you know, ChatGPT on the side with company specific information, whatever, yep. um, at what scale use of AI, the scale of that use in a business mean that really this should be a consideration because you posted a pretty good bit of content man, ages ago, like probably a year ago now. It was yeah. the uh, the AI policy. policy yeah. yeah, yeah. Which at that time was groundbreaking. Like no one was even really thinking about the sort of overarching sort of, yeah, well, well framework that, yeah. that people within a business should be adhering to. So how many people are okay with just working to that? Yeah. How many businesses and at what degree should be looking at this? Yeah, sure. I uh, look, a year ago, an AI policy was, was the minimum of what you needed to get out into your organization, right? You needed to stand for something around mm -hmm. AI. You either needed to tell everybody, don't touch it, or there's going to be, you know, 
some problems we're going to have um, yep. other, or it's going to be hey we actually do support this we are going to use it and here are our guidelines um, the policy about 12 months ago was the entry point now we're looking at an actual management system the management system itself i would say that if anyone is starting to build any kind of you know gpt bots um, or, or agents um, within their business mm -hmm. I think it's enough to warrant uh, having an AI management system because okay. what it allows you to do is actually take your the, the data resources being used for for that particular agent. So you know the actual content, mm -hmm. um, it, the tooling that's being used. So whether it's Copilot or whether it's GPT, OpenAI, whatever, mm -hmm. um, and then also it goes and extends further into like the system resourcing and computing power that's required to use it. Um, you need to factor all of these things on top of the human side. So who's actually owning these agents and who is the person responsible to making sure that the answers this thing is giving is correct. Mm -hmm. So you get that full oversight because the last thing anyone wants to do is kind of release a bot into their organization, tell everybody, hey, go ahead and use it. And then, you know, in a scenario where it gives the wrong answer and it causes a knock-on effect, mm -hmm. whether it's either telling a HR, you know, person that you know what to do with a particular uh, person that's done something within your organization, you know, if it gives the wrong information, who's actually at fault there, All right? And it's these questions we need to ask before <laughs> okay. we start building things. So. Is that the ethical considerations part of the of the standard? Yeah, we've got ethical considerations in all AI, um, as well as biases. Okay. Um, biases exist everywhere in in you know day to day life, but AI also has significant bias. Um, you you think about there's classic examples of you know just take a simple agent doing a bank evaluation for a loan, mm -hmm. right? You could put two people like us um, going for the same amount of money. Uh, and if you get approved for that loan and I don't, right, and it's caused by a bias that we can't see, yeah. it breaks a bunch of rules. It breaks it breaks our the bias rule. It ba it it breaks what we call transparency. Yep. So I always say AI shouldn't be magic, right? We yeah. all think it's magic, but the answer it gives should never be magic. We need to know why we got a particular answer. Okay, so I kind of like this. It's um kind of understanding the things we're looking to protect against uh, through through adhering to these standards yep. before we go into what does adoption and ongoing management look like. Sure. So, okay, so there's a clear example of uh, you need to, to understand basically the guts of whatever it is you're deploying and the basis on which it makes decisions to protect yourself from potentially really bad ones. Yep. What are the risk management or types of risk is it looking to to protect a business from by adhering to this? Yeah, so we're looking um, mainly at uh, at the bias, like I said mm -hmm. before. Um, privacy is right, definitely something we're looking at protecting. Um, you know, actual going back to security and cybersecurity, um, with and and ultimately transparency. Right, these are the things that we are ultimately trying to protect the business against from you know, from breaking any rules or, or failing. And when we say breaking rules, it's always it's always about, you know, our interested parties or our what we call our regulatory bodies. At the moment, there's nothing that exists from a government perspective, especially in Australia around this, but we are starting to see um, guidelines, responsible use guidelines being, um, being released by the National AI Centre and things like that, because we're all trying to get ahead of this thing, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's, it's evolving at a rate that we've never seen before. Everyone is using it. Um, it's here to stay as well. It's not like it's going to go anywhere. No, I don't see this being wound back. No. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. So putting putting the governance framework in place is going to be important because it's everywhere, right? It's not an option like some of the other standards where it's like, oh, should I go for it? It's like, well, if you're using it and it's embedded, you need to control it. Okay. Okay. So... The, the last part, at least as far as I've got here, is is the continuous improvement piece. Yeah. Uh, I guess that's just the, it's such a rapidly evolving space that you need to keep coming back to and revisit it. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, when, when we talk about an AI agent, for instance, because yeah. that's what most people are doing these days, they're yeah. building these agents we or doing have. their consulting. Yeah. Um, we need to make sure we keep going back, right? You could build an agent today and in two months time, new features could be released by whatever platform you're building it on. Um, it could break, it could start giving different answers. It's why we always need that human oversight mm -hmm. on top. Um, yeah, that basically will govern the use of it. Okay, so just so I understand as well, what's the... That's the why, I guess. So you, it's essentially 
it's protection because otherwise there's a financial risk to getting it wrong. There's damages. There's there's uh, brand damage. There's all sorts of things, right? So you're classic data. Ultimately, it's it's really coming back to the data piece. It's just handled in a different way, really. Absolutely, that's yeah. exactly what it is, right? It's 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 making sure that we're complying with the with our regulations um, and making sure that you know things like making sure that staff know what an agent its intended use is for. Mm -hmm. There's no point getting somebody um, using a HR bot to calculate some financial data, yeah. right? So we need to actually be able to t tell our staff what to use, what not to use it for. So, you know, you got your intended purpose, but also your not intended purpose. Um, and it also allows you to classify things like the data quality. If you're actually doing financial analysis in with using an agent or something like that, you need to make sure that the, the quality of the data going in is immaculate or it's going to send you down the wrong path of where you think your business is at. Yeah. So it's about all of these little things. There's something like 40 or 45 odd um, uh, characteristics going into any particular AI uh, agent, even at a high level, that you could really start to think about on and making sure that the thing that you've built is, is going to give you the answers that you want. Okay. I remember in the ISO 27001 chat we had, what I got a lot of good feedback about was the really sort of hands-on detail around what is the uh, what is the process to get certified look like and yep. the ongoing process, including, you know, I guess the, the length of time and the cost. So do you want to dive into that a bit? Yeah, absolutely. So there's 38 controls in the 42001 um, standard. So you know, 27,001 has 93 controls. So there's not as many, all right? It's yep. just under half. Um, timeline to certification will always depend. If you've already got an existing 27,001 system and you're bolting this on, it could take you anywhere between, you know, six to 12 months to, to get yourself certified. Um, certification bodies are currently going through the process of um, becoming JazzAnts accredited. Um, and so JazzAnts, for, for anyone that doesn't know, that is um, the Joint Australia and New Zealand uh, accreditation body that sits over Australia and New Zealand. So I also just heard jazz hands. Like jazz hands, yeah, 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 yeah that's cool. that's kind of it. So um, once they recognise it, um, that's how we can verify, you know, these certificates of okay. everybody going, hey, we're AI certified. Um, and so that's going to take anywhere between six to twelve months. Okay. Um, and the the process is the same uh, as a normal forty two thousand uh, twenty seven thousand and one audit. Okay, so. Um the, the cost is the same then roughly? Or? Yeah, look, we, we, we still figure I would, it out. Yeah, it was, they're all still figuring it out. I mean, yeah. again, this is AI is moving at such a pace, not only for people using it, but now the auditors need to understand how to actually, you know, audit this thing. And, mm -hmm. you know, you need to get trained, you need to be, you know, accredited yourself. So, um, yeah, it's probably going to be, I would still say less than a 27,001 audit. It's not going to be more or the same, in my opinion, because there's less controls to audit at the uh, in the annex but yeah it's going to be you know it's going to be around if you know if we're talking real figures here if you're a average size msp potentially i don't know 20 or so staff or 20 25 staff you're probably going to be looking at around 10 to 15k for for your certification okay but so it's, it's for you mentioned msps there but really it's it's any business should be looking at this? Of course. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. So uh, I, I always go back to, you know, obviously what we do, we're primarily working with MSPs, but there are uh, the 42001 um, uh, management system is for anybody mm -hmm. um, because if you are just simply using it, you can build an AI system. Now, if you're developing and doing consulting and doing more, then you, you're, you still use the same system to uh, create those guidelines, um, but you're doing more with AI than what potentially a, a just a standalone client is okay so at the moment as it stands it's a, it's a standard but you can't be certified against it right correct okay it, yeah it's called a non-accredited certification so um it will eventually turn into a certificate a certified standard um yeah, and jazz hands do their thing correct okay got exactly it. okay so what's your what's your advice now to a business who is actually really diving into ai they've got the bot maybe they've got I mean, like us, right? We're, we're, we're triaging tickets based on AI categorization. We're, we're well, we're triaging and allocating and, and prioritizing and doing a bunch of things. We've got AI in the way that we respond to RFPs in, in terms of uh, leveraging previous examples. We've got uh, Copilot GitHub. We've got a whole bunch of stuff. So 
do, do you do you hold off until it's a certification or is it not about the certification it's about the this the the surety that you're going about this to, to a really high level of, of compliance or yeah confidence? It's a, it's a great question. I think if you're going to go all in, then you build your, your AI management system to comply to 42001. For those looking to just kind of get started around governance within their business, I always say start with an AI champion within the business, mm -hmm. right? Figure out who that person that knows and loves it is and get them to build a little bit of a team around um, where your agents are going to do the, have the most impact. Okay. Mm -hmm. For the first time, we're th we're now looking at bringing in, you know, a like I said before, a HR person or a or a finance person into something that has largely always sat with a CTO or in a senior engineer position. Yeah. You know, if if we are building an agent that's going to give financial data, get the get the most experienced person to be able to verify the numbers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's about getting a champion internally. Um, build a team of, of different departments that can actually verify and help you build it. Um, and then ultimately, once it's built and tested, um, then verify, you know, verify the data or the outputs um, and make sure that the answers it's giving is actually going to be helpful um, and just always sit on top of it. Don't, mm. don't let it get away from you and don't let it sit there once it's built and just go, yeah, beautiful, this is done because it will change on you very quickly. Yes, uh, there's so many, well, there are so many feature requests going into Cal, who's our internal champion, our CTO. It's just wild, the day to day, the, the, the updates in terms of capability and, yeah. and I guess intent as well, kind of, kind of and like you two point before, almost having to break up bots to do very different things or else it becomes a behemoth as well. But yeah. you know, I digress. Um, question for you, I guess, on a more personal level is just how hard is it to to position yourself as an expert in the space when it's so fast moving, so immature to a, to a certain extent. Yeah. Is it kind of blowing your mind a little bit? Uh, look, I mean, I'm the first one to, to say I'm not an expert. I don't think anybody is an expert unless they go back to, you know, they've been doing this uh, under the hood for the last 10 years. There's plenty of people out there that have, to their credit, been doing, you know, machine learning and things like that um, well before the, the mainstream release. Um, from our perspective, I think we need to take just take the uh, the next steps to making sure that what we are actually seeing and using is protected. Mm -hmm. um, you know, subject matter exper experience is probably better than subject matter experts um, in this space. Uh, like I said, unless you've been working with it for for many many years. Yeah, it's it's it wasn't that long ago. Probably just on the other side of uh, like the late 2024. Ross, our CEO, was saying that pretty much everyone in this industry is only a couple of weeks ahead of their clients. Like, you know, yeah. we're all just, it, it, everything's moving so fast, you're just adapting. I think I'm seeing now just it's starting to change a little bit. I think in the last probably two or three months, I've seen certainly our business adopt a lot of AI capability and through that lived experience, that expertise is growing. Yeah. So I, my, my take is probably over the next six to nine months, we're really gonna see some people sort of break out from the pack and take off, but yep. I mean, what do I know? <laughs> <laughs> well, we can just wait and see. see I mean, if I'm proved wrong, uh, we'll just, just delete the episode. It's fine. Um, all right. So I guess to, to wrap up the uh, the 42001 chat, um, if people want to, to pick up the conversation with you directly, where should they find you? Uh, as always, um, reach out on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm always on there, uh, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. I spend mm -hmm. a, too much time there, but reach out there. I'm more than happy to have a chat with anybody around what it looks like for their business, whether it's an MSP or non-MSP. Ultimately, I'm just, I just want to make sure that whatever we've got out there is just being looked after and, and you know, is being governed. Um, so yeah, LinkedIn for me is always great. Love it. Thanks, man. Good chat. No worries. Thanks. Go, go, go.